Joining us now, Greg Mankiw, Harvard economics professor, former chairman of Council of Economic Advisors under uh, President George W. Bush. Uh, it's good to see you, Greg. You're, you're, you're taking on the, the Laffer and Steve Moore uh, uh, book, I guess, Trump, Trumponomics. You have quite a bit of criticism, pretty scathing of, of a lot of the um, a, a lot of the tenets of that book. One of them, I, I think, that, that struck me was the tribalism of Moore and Laffer's approach stems primarily from their devotion to a single issue, the level of taxation. And um, I just, you were, when were you with, two, 2003 to 2005? Was that when you were with Bush? Yes, absolutely. All right. Did you um, did in, you come in, in and did you come in and try to to prevent the the Bush tax cuts from happening, or because the, the, some of them I, are two thousand three? Right? I am not opposed to lower taxes, and I think there are some good aspects of the tax reform. But what I think um, Laffer and Moore do is they make this seem like a panacea, like this is the solution to all our problems. And it's, it, it, lower corporate taxes is a good thing. That doesn't mean we can ignore all our other problems, like the long-term fiscal imbalance or climate change or lots of other well, things. Oh, so I think they focus on this change, one issue as if that's going to solve everything. What, what, what do you want to do for climate change? You, uh, if you've seen what's going on in Paris, I guess, right? Do you, you think a carbon tax is the way to go? And I mean, do you think raising prices on I do. All, on, I, I, that's right. Do. I, am, I am part of the group, the, the, the Baker-Schultz group, that wants to put on a carbon tax and use the revenue from that to rebate in the form of um, dividends to the public. I think it's not if, going so well in Paris stuck, right now, Greg. Well, they weren't going to rebate the revenue. I mean, if they just want to raise taxes, but if you, if you raise taxes on carbon and then give the money back to people but, so that you're incentivizing a, a cleaner economy, right. but not really raising the tax burden on people. That's a very different story by, than what was going cleaner, on you in, mean in lower France. CO, lower emissions. By cleaner, you mean lower <laughs> CO2 emissions. Is that what that's Yeah, what exactly. Lower, C, <laughs> low, lower carbon emissions. Out of all the people in that Paris deal, it, it, you know the one country that actually has, has, has actually had lower emissions and, and actually been sort of uh, succeeding in, in bringing down emissions is, is not the ones you're talking about. It's, it's the United States, right? But, but you fault the Bush administration you know, for not, or the uh, Trump administration for not doing more on that, or? You know, there's a really a consensus of economists, both the right, left, and center, that putting a price on carbon is, is the right way to go. It's really not a partisan thing among the, the experts. Um, it's just that this administration basically okay. doesn't want to believe that there is a problem there. Um, and there is. And all the scientists tell us that there is, and okay. I'm more likely to believe this, the, the scientist's brain than the president's guts on okay. this issue. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and I've, I've heard all those arguments about the, about the consensus and scientists and, and, and everything else. Um, so in, in terms of, uh, of the, the corporate tax reform, so you, you think that's okay. I, I, with entitlements, that's a glaring omission from, I guess, from, from the Laffer and Moore book. They, they don't really take the administration to task for uh, for ignoring that. I, isn't that one of the most important things that a, a, a conservative like you are, would, would, would mostly think we need to deal with? Absolutely. I think we have a, a looming fiscal imbalance that's going to unfold as my generation of baby boomers retires, and we need to do something about that. Now, the, the Laffer <clears throat> the Laffer more view is that we're going to get generate so much growth from these tax cuts that, that, we're gonna, that all these problems are going to disappear. I don't believe that. I don't think most economists believe that. So I think we really need to take on this, this fiscal imbalance and yeah. figure out what the compromise is between lower benefits for my generation of baby I, I, boomers or higher taxes on the next generation of workers. We're, we're going to get to the, the China situation, too. But I, I also, you, you, you talk about not addressing the income inequality. And I just happened to look at the Bush tax cuts that when, when you were there. And I mean, the biggest criticism from the left is it went totally to the wealthy, the, the Bush tax cuts. And, oh, I, and I, 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 think, I think the way to, prov to deal with the income inequality thing is not to use the tax system to redistribute more. I think it's to provide more opportunities for people but, to but, bottom but, of the economic but ladder. But when you were the CEA that involves guy, focusing on things. But when you were there, the well, tax the, cuts of 2003 did exacerbate the, the, the income inequality with, or not? One of the big Bush initiatives was on education. And really, the, the, what we need to do is focus on the educational system to provide people the opportunity to climb the economic ladder, not to say, oh, you can't, you can't make it on your own. We need to provide people better opportunities. And that means focusing on education. That's okay. another thing this president has not thought about at all. Okay. The, uh, in terms of China, that, uh, you're, you're at least you say you'll give the, 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 uh, the, the, that there might be a kernel of truth. In fact, here, I'm going to read directly. Trump in uh, to be fair to Trump and the other anti-globalization zealots, amid all their misinformation and bluster, is a kernel of truth 
and that's that uh, the U.S. produces a lot of intellectual property and that certain countries like China uh, obviously don't really respect that or, or we fail to enforce the copyrights. Is that really only a kernel of, of, uh, of the problem? It, it, it's not a big problem for you? What, how oh, would you, no, I think how would you address a, China? How would you address the China I th- issue? I, I think that is the most serious international trade issue that we face. That's very different what the, Bush, what the Trump administration is doing, which is focusing on the trade deficits, taking on a lot of our allies, putting tariffs on people in Canada and um, uh, in Europe. So I think we need, we need a much more nuanced approach that brings our allies together and focuses on, on bad acts by China and not, not putting all our trading partners in the same bucket and saying we're going to put tariffs on everything. I think that's extremely wrong-headed and really insufficiently nuanced, insufficiently subtle. I think we can do better uh, than, than we're doing now. We've had, a lot of people want to do that. They want to get our allies on board. And, and whenever I hear that, I mean, I, that, that, that sounds good. It just, just seems like we've had that, that approach for a long time and nothing, nothing changed. And, and I'm, people that, that act, I mean, I've talked to people that, that, that do business in China. It's, it's mind blowing uh, when they go over there, what, what is expected of them thinking of, a, of one of the big private companies in this country that does a lot of business over there. And they say they go over there, it, everything's got, it's got to be their way or the highway, but and the it's Chinese 50-50. Say, the Chinese look at it and think, this was right. the terms of engagement. Like, this was the deal from the get-go. You wanted access to our market, right. and here's the price we charge for that. They're the only country that... That, that does that. Oh. And, and that was oh. the mistake, maybe going to W. That does it to that extent, Greg. No, I, I, I agree with, the, with those issues. That's no reason to pick a fight with Canada and Mexico and Europe. I mean, that, this, the there are orga- organizations like the WTO that are much better suited for that than the sort of unilateral approach that the Trump administration right. is following. Greg, so what do you think is ultimately going to happen here? I don't know. I mean, my guess is we'll see something a little bit like we saw with NAFTA, which is they'll have some sort of agreement that's a slight change from what we've seen in the past. I mean, remember, the, the, this whole NAFTA revision is not really that radically different from what came before. Um, so my guess is uh, we'll have see some small agreements. Uh, Trump will exaggerate how, how magnificent it is, um, and then we'll move on. That's my hope. The worst case scenario is that uh, things fall apart and we go down into a really a global trade war. Um, and even, tr- even uh, Trump advisors, uh, Moore and Laffer, worry about that uh, in their book. Mm. Yeah, they've, they've said that on our program, too. But, uh, Greg, they, they, we come back to this point constantly. As Joe was just talking about, the terms of doing business are pretty steep. China has grown into uh, the second largest economy in the world in the meantime, and maybe there does need to be some renegotiation. Maybe there are changes that have to happen. Waiting for those changes to happen in previous administrations for years and years didn't seem like a lot was happening. Maybe it was time to shake things up a little bit. Would you agree with any of that? Maybe. The, pro- the problem is when you shake things up, you, you don't know what you're going to get. Right. And um, if, I, if, I, if I saw a lot of nuance in, the, in this president's rhetoric on international trade, I'd be more uh, comfortable right now. I just see a lot of bluster and a lot of wrong-headed thinking. I mean, this focus on the trade deficit as, as the, the metric is something that, that very few economists think makes sense. So with, the, with the exception of Peter Navarro, I think yeah. you basically get almost the entire American Economic Association thinking the trade deficit is not a big a problem uh, as President Trump thinks it Let is. Let me just think, we try to go back to the, the, the eight years where, where we didn't have a single year of... of uh, of 3% growth. So it looks like we may get 3% growth, whether it's from deregulation from the Trump administration, from the Stephen Moore and Art Laffer. They like all that stuff, too, the deregulation. They like the, the tax reform. So we may hit, hit 3%. What was, I would ask you why we weren't able to hit 3% for eight years, but I don't want to have to say that, that you know, everybody in the Obama administration is blaming you and blaming the Bush administration well, for driving the car into the ditch, which disallowed them to why give the keys back to the guys that drove it into the ditch. So was it Obama's fault for not doing tax reform and deregulation, or was it your fault for putting him in the position where he couldn't grow at 3%? Which is it, Greg? Seriously. Well, no, I, I, mean, I, think the, I think doing some corporate tax reform was a good thing. And I, and I give Paul Ryan... A lot that of credit. Did, that, the editorial that, that, you wrote that, about that, that Moore and, and Laffer, I mean, it's scathing. You did, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, it pull, it's like pulling teeth. Taxes, you but know, they, I, I, know. I, 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 think, I think corporate tax reform is going to promote economic growth. Right, well, what happened I think it's to not the, the economic eight growth years. nearly as much, I don't think it's going to promote nearly right. as much 
as as the, the Trump advisors say. And that's well, how why, about the three percent? Why do we have that now? What what do you think? That, well, I, that's I think no, we, no. We're in a period. I, I think we've had a deceleration of growth. That's a worldwide phenomenon. It's not just in the United States. It's happening throughout the developed world. Lower productivity growth. Um, and so it's probably not due to any country's set of economic policies if, if all these countries are experiencing it uh, at the same time. Uh, in addition, we're also in a situation now where we're, we're no longer having the demographic changes that are promoting growth. Um, we, you know, women have already entered the labor force, so they can't enter again. The baby boom generation is entering retirement age. They're leaving the labor force. So the demographics are pushing right. us in the, you, you in the direction the of slow growth. You explain the slow How do we do the 3% then, then this year? It's the sugar high, the, the Keynesian? I, 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 I think... If you look, if you if, if you look over the next ten years, I'd be very surprised if we hit the average right. growth rate that we've hit over the past over right. the past. But, but at least we years. might do it for one year, which which we weren't. All right. Yeah, for, yeah, sure. For, all right. All right.